One NFL player became 600 pounds. Another became an armed robber. And that's not even the worst of it all. These are the NFL players that let themselves go. Jamarcus Russell came into the NFL, signing a contract worth around $70 million. But it wasn't even about the money to him, it was about the cheeseburgers. Jamarcus was a star athlete in high school and college, where he became a legendary quarterback. At LSU, he got better each year, throwing over 6,000 yards and 52 touchdowns. But the 2007 Sugar Bowl game is where Jamarcus let the world know he belonged in the NFL. That game, Jamarcus threw and rushed over 350 yards, scored three touchdowns, and was named MVP for the win. And there was one person watching in that crowd that mattered more than anyone else, Oakland Raiders owner Al Davis. He saw what Jamarcus did and wanted to draft him number one. So he did. But as soon as Jamarcus made it to the NFL, all the problems came out. He refused to study or practice unless he was paid a contract he wanted. So the Raiders rearranged the deal and gave him $68 million. You'd think this would be enough money to play the sport you love for a living. But when Jamarcus joined the team, he wasn't prepared for games and looked out of shape on the field. The man was 185 pounds in high school, but within just a couple of years, he put on another 80, ballooning up to 265 at only six foot six. This guy is a pro athlete with a 30.6 BMI. That is clinically obese, but that wasn't even the worst part about Jamarcus's issues. On Tuesdays, the team studied their opponents and prepared for the next game, and Jamarcus would always skip those days, so the staff tried everything. They even made DVDs of the game plans for Jamarcus to watch at home, but he still never seemed ready to play, so coaches sent Jamarcus a blank DVD to see if he'd notice. And the next time they saw him, he said the game plan looked good. Something had to be done. So his teammates came to Jamarcus's house to watch film with him. And that's when they found out about his secret addiction. He'd make them bring 10 Wendy's cheeseburgers as a bribe to watch the film. And when the organization found out, it all made sense. They just paid a 300 pound man tens of millions just so he could eat his way out of the league. So they released Jamarcus, and he finished his career with more interceptions than touchdowns. Fast forward a few years later, and he attempted an NFL comeback. But would you want someone on your team who ate their way out of the league? No? Well, neither did anyone else. But at least Jamarcus didn't end up millions in debt like this next NFL player. Imagine going from a $60 million contract, graced with the cover of Madden, to being $1.5 million in debt. That's exactly what happened to Vince Young. It all started when Vince was drafted to the NFL back in 2006 with the number three pick. He signed a $25 million contract before ever stepping on a pro field. But Vince turned into one of the biggest busts of all time. In college, Vince was setting records, being the first player ever to pass for 3,000 yards and rush for 1,000 yards in a single season. Just think about this, Lamar Jackson didn't even do that this year, and he's the fastest player in NFL history and a face of the league. But even though Vince was a legend in college, once he made it to the NFL, he realized it was way harder to be in this league. By his third season, he was nothing more than an average quarterback. In fact, he threw more interceptions than touchdowns during his six years in the NFL. So he lost his love for the game and retired in 2011. But hey, at least he walked away with $60 million. You save that and you got enough for a lifetime, even your kid's lifetime. But Vince Young had different plans for his retirement. He decided to spend all of his money on his cheesecake factory addiction. Vince would spend 5,000 a week at the restaurant. One employee said he spent 15,000 in one night, but that's just where the reckless spending started. One day, Vince decided he wanted some silence when he flew across the country. So he bought every single seat on a Southwest flight to be by himself, spending around $20,000 on a single flight. Vince thought he was invincible a $300,000 birthday party, Ferraris. He was buying alcohol for every hot girl he saw. But one day, Vince got a call from his financial advisor telling him he was dead broke. This man went from $60 million to negative 1.5 million in literally three years. 
So Vince was forced to file bankruptcy. Things were so bad, selling all of his old assets weren't enough to cover his debt. So he eventually went back to school, entered rehab, and hit the reset button on his life. <sighs> That's tough. But it could be worse. I mean, at least Vince didn't become one of the most hated NFL players ever, like this next guy. To this day, no one can really explain what happened to Antonio Brown. Some blame his ego, others think the Madden curse had something to do with it, but either way, AB let himself go. During his first years in the NFL, he racked up over 11,000 yards and almost 80 touchdowns. He had 100 receptions in six straight seasons, the longest streak in NFL history. Antonio felt unstoppable. And with that, he became the second highest paid wide receiver ever, making 17 million per season. No wonder his ego got so big. He started feeling like he was the organization, not the team. And he started beefing with people in the locker room, caught streaming teammates bashing other NFL players and partying nonstop. Eventually, he demanded a trade from the Steelers, so he was dealt to the Raiders. And then once he got to Oakland, the problems only got worse. He literally showed up to training camp in a hot air balloon, but he couldn't even practice. He had to sit out after suffering frostbite from a recent cryotherapy session but it just keeps getting worse. Around that time, the NFL started placing uniform bands for the upcoming season, and one of those was a helmet that was Antonio's favorite. So he refused to practice with the Raiders for weeks, trying to petition the league. The Raiders started fining him for this, and Antonio posted the letter to Instagram with the caption, when your own team wants to hate, everybody gotta pay this year. And later in the day, Antonio showed up to practice, confronted the GM, and teammates had to hold him back. A few days later, Antonio apologized to everyone during a team meeting and things actually seemed like they were turning around. Until later that day, Antonio posted a video on YouTube of a private conversation recorded between him and John Gruden. So the Raiders fined him $215,000 for conduct detrimental to the team and avoided Antonio's $30 million in guaranteed money. So he went back to Instagram and posted, you're gonna piss a lot of people off when you start doing what's best for you. I'm not mad at anyone. I'm just asking for the freedom to prove them all wrong. And just hours later, the Raiders released him. The very next day, Antonio was signed by the Patriots and the internet nearly exploded, imagining him and Tom Brady together. And they went on to play a single game together. But then another scandal was released and the Patriots released him immediately. Antonio went from a superstar and a face of the NFL to nearly blackballed from ever playing again. So he's lucky the Buccaneers gave him a chance to prove himself again. But on the bright side, at least Antonio has kept himself in shape, unlike this next NFL player. Jared Lorenzen's fall off is one of the most heartbreaking stories in the NFL. Unlike any pro athlete ever, he was the first to predict his own death. It all started when Jared was a kid. Throughout his teen years, Jared treated sports like his life depended on it could have made it to the NBA if he wanted, but he was even better at football. And I mean, the man was already 240 pounds in high school, so it worked out perfectly. As a junior, Jared passed for a record 2,759 yards and 37 touchdowns. Then during his senior year, he threw for 3,393 yards, 45 touchdowns, and rushed for 15 touchdowns as well. Jared went to Kentucky for college, and there he became even better. He had to drop 40 pounds down to 200 for his coach to let him play, but it was well worth it. Jared spent four years at Kentucky, and he threw for over 10,000 yards and 78 touchdowns, both records to this day. But during all this time, Jared's weight was slowly becoming a concern. By the end of his college career, Jared was 285 pounds. He wasn't the size of a typical quarterback, so no NFL team wanted to draft him. He signed to the Giants as a free agent, but they already had two solid quarterbacks, so Jared didn't get much of an opportunity. He eventually joined the Colts where he only played that preseason. After playing four games through three seasons, Jared decided the NFL just wasn't for him. And in 2011, he became a GM of the Northern Kentucky River Monsters, but he still preferred being on the field. So the team let him become their quarterback. And that year, Jared threw for 81 touchdowns and won MVP. He played a few seasons, but injuries got the best of him. And when he retired in 2013, the man was well over 300 pounds. Not long after he retired, his wife divorced him. 
and it sent him into a spiraling depression. The only comfort he had was food. The years went by, and Jared kept eating. Doctors told him he was literally killing himself, but Jared was in denial. Then, in 2019, Jared looked at himself in the mirror, hopped on a scale, and hated what he saw. So he started filming a documentary called The Jared Lorenzen Project. And during the first episode, he was nearly 600 pounds. Jared wanted to use this opportunity to inspire anyone else dealing with similar issues. He admitted he was eating dangerously and said, the way I'm going right now, as scary as it is, I'll die in five years. If I don't wake up tomorrow, it wouldn't be a shock to many people. Jared was really trying, but one day he felt a pain in his chest. So Jared called his father and said he didn't feel well. They called an ambulance and when he got to the hospital, doctors found his oxygen levels low, his kidneys were failing, and his heart was enlarged. Jared lasted a few more days, but even with the doctors doing everything they could, he tragically passed away at 38 years old. Michael Vick was a face of the NFL. He had all the potential in the world to become a Hall of Famer. And in the prime of his career, a scandal he was involved in completely ruined his life. When Vick was drafted to the NFL, he became one of the rarest players ever. Running a 425 in the 40 yard dash, he was the fastest NFL quarterback ever. And that's why in Madden, they gave him the highest overall speed of 95. So not only was Vic a quarterback, he could run the ball better than most running backs. And after three seasons, he got the biggest contract in the NFL at the time, $130 million. It seemed like nothing could slow him down until people found out what he was spending all these millions on. After receiving a tip, police started investigating Vic's cousin, and eventually the trail led right to Michael Vic himself. And what they found was so horrifying, it sent chills down their spines. Instead of finding evidence towards his cousin, they found dozens of injured and neglected dogs owned by Vic. Yeah, that's right. This world-class athlete was spending his free time running a dogfighting ring, going under the alias of Uki. From 2001 to 2007, hundreds of thousands of dollars were being gambled here. And at first when this was found, Vic denied any involvement, but that didn't last long since you know they found the dogs in his own house. So he accepted the consequences, was sentenced to 23 months in prison, and paid over a million dollars for care, recovery, and adoption for the dogs involved. Vic went from a superstar football player to a felon. Not just a felon, this dude was fighting dogs, man. Everyone loves dogs. After this, the public hated Michael Vick, but at the end of the day, the NFL's a business, so he wasn't completely banned from the league. He rejoined the NFL and played from 2009 to 2015 for the Eagles, Jets, and Steelers. But through all these years, fans protested and petitioned to have him kicked out. And in 2016, when his stats were dropping off, no teams wanted him, and he had to retire. This video right here is about Shaquem Griffin, the only player to ever make it to the NFL with one hand. It's an incredible story and dude, you're just missing out not watching it. So what are you doing? You ain't got nothing else to do, man. Just click on it. 